Right guys, so I thought I would jump into um, Automobilista 2 and I'm going to run the uh, BMW um, M Hypercar, the LMDH. Um, and I'm going to run this back to back against uh, Le Mans Ultimate. And I also think I have, I'm pretty sure I have this as a mod in a set of Corsa as well. So probably going to jump in that as well and see how, how that kind of uh, compares. Oh, I haven't played AMS2 in a while. Um, so I thought, what better way to jump in and just kind of see how this actually drives compared to the Mon Ultimate version and maybe even the Assetto Corsa version if I have it, which I think I do. Alright, so let's uh, get an outside view first, just get a quick sound check. Oh, superb. Backfires out of the car. Just sound absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I love the backfires. Alright, let's get into the car and kind of see what it's like on the inside. Just getting a bit used to it. In this recording, by the way, in um, AMS2, there might be two like lines down the side of the screen in the recording. There might be. Um, if there is, that is down to the recording software um, just uh, not rendering the sides of the screen properly. So, not to worry, I guess. Now, the car model looks great. Uh, really, graphically, I think this is uh, very, very good. A bit harder on the frame rates than uh, LMU, if I recall correctly. But um, yeah, whatever. Let's do a couple of laps, kind of see what this is like. Yeah, I noticed the front is very sticky. Like it goes where you point it, and the back just wants to rotate around it a little bit. But it still feels very. Um, very intuitive, quite forgiving, quite pointy. Very fun though, I have to say. I've just gone, I think, with medium tires on the car as well. I haven't, uh, I didn't put softs on because um, I just wanted to compare it, you know, kind of as it sits on the default setup. And I think, I think in LMU, there's only the option for um, medium tires and higher tires. So I thought, well, I'll put mediums on this at least. And that will be kind of some sort of comparison, maybe. Yeah, curb interaction is very good as well. I say very good. Remember, like my um, old sim, the one that I'm most used to was probably a Seto Corsa Competizione, and man, the curb interaction on that thing was just nuts. I'm just out breaking myself a tiny bit there. Yeah, the front end is very compliant um, on this. That's not necessarily a bad thing, I don't think. Like, I mean, it just, it's very, it's nice to drive, like, very nice to drive. I'm just sloppy on the brakes. Yeah, the force feedback is very good. Um, you're never really in doubt as to what the car is trying to do. Although the front end does seem maybe excessively strong, even with the downforce off the car, I think. Strong on the front end, I mean. But yeah, still absolutely feels brilliant, I have to say. Mm. 
Yeah, this is great, man. I um, haven't played this game in a while. And I can already start to remember why I loved it so much. It feels absolutely brilliant. And graphically, I do think it's um, probably among the best at the moment out there. This is super, man. This is uh, very engaging. Very, very engaging as well. Engaging, twitchy, feels good. You know, it's just it's doing everything right, I think. Curb interaction is brilliant as well. It's like as you'd expect it to be. It doesn't launch the car, but it does upset it a little bit. Just perfect, like. And I'm going to lock up there. Yeah. It's okay, though. more lap. Yeah, one thing I like about this game is like it's um you can really get into a rhythm kind of easier because it's um it's just a smidgen more forgiven than what I think LMU was like. Um I think. And I'll see in a few minutes like when I jump into that. Um, and I haven't had any practice in any of the sims, by the way, so I'm just kind of jumping in completely raw, like, and uh, hoping for the best again. Not not shooting for crazy lap times or anything, just, uh, you know, car, track, drive, and see what it does. Yeah, I know, so I'm able to trail break in there quite abusively like I mean I don't think I should be able to carry that much in but again it's only minor like minor gripes overall this feels brilliant like I mean just I wouldn't say anything bad about it oh locked up there it's gonna run wide Yeah, that's good. That's uh, that's pretty good. Very impressive. Um, let's have a quick look at the replay. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. I have to say, like, I mean, the the, the front end feels very compliant. There's a lot of grip on the car, a lot of grip, and I think even when it feels like you're you're overstepping a little bit, um, the car feels very safe. Like at no point does it feel the car's gone to out of control too much. Um, very compliant, very pointy. A um, lot of downforce, and I think even on the front, um, the f I mean, the front feels super strong. Um, doesn't feel like the front is going to be the limiting factor in most cases at all. Um, the back of it then likes to step and slide a little bit. Um, but it's natural enough, and you can still notice, like on the exit of some corners, if you abuse that, um, you still have to be very quick um, and correct it and catch it that way. But yeah, overall, this is uh, this is fantastic, it really is. You can see even over the corpse there, like it's the right amount of unsettling. It's not too, you know, it's not unrealistic. Um, I don't think. 
Um, yeah. Pretty good. I'm gonna try and jump into a Seto Corsa. Um, yeah, look, I'm gonna try and jump into a Seto. Um, load up the mod of this. Um, which I think, I think is done by RSS, I think. Um, I wasn't gonna include that in this little test, but I thought, well, if I have it, I'll do it. And uh, then we'll jump into, into LMU as well. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, do that. Righty, so I do have it in a subtle course, so I knew I downloaded it before. Um, anyway, here it is. Uh, this is the uh, BMW M hypercar, so let's uh, jump in, uh, check the tyres. Soft, high temp, soft, low. I don't know what the difference is. Though it's soft, low temp, I guess. I don't know what it does, to be honest. We'll stick about, I don't know, 30 litres of fuel in. Um, what else are there? I'm not, I'm not going to touch anything else. I just want to see like the amount of adjustments on it. Um, pretty good. Air vent. Different air vents we can have. No idea what any of this does, by the way. Or there's a digital panel. What does the air vent actually do? It's 18 at the moment. I have no idea. We'll just leave it and let's, uh, let's just drive, I guess. Um, so, let me just check. Yeah, I do have a profile for this on Banner Lab, so I'll just load that up as well. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's jump in and see what it's like. Um, alrighty, I'm just going to adjust the view a little bit here because it just feels a little bit off. Um, so let me just... C position, bring that forward. And yeah, that's a bit more natural, I think. Let's go ahead and save that. And, alright, let's go. See what this is all about. There's the outside of it. Looks pretty good. Let's see what the sound is like compared to the... Um, Sounds pretty good. Feel the view, I think, is a little bit out on this, by the way, because uh, I've just um, had to reset my NVIDIA display there earlier on, so it does seem a little bit off. But um, yeah, it's okay for the test. This feels more neutral than the AMS2. Uh, yeah, <laughs> definitely more neutral, as in the front does have a limit and so does the back. Um, so right there, like I overdrove the front quite a bit. And um, the back then came around as soon as the front gripped up. That was sort of missing in AMS2. Anyway, let's uh, crack on. Yeah, it's very engaging. Like, and I mean, you have to remember, like, for a set of course, like this game came out in like 2013. Um, now I know this is a paid mod, but um. Yeah, all right, so the front of it and the rear of it definitely have a, a limit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drive slightly within the limit of the car just for the next lap, and then we'll get maybe two fast laps in. Graphically, it's very good, of course. 
it's uh, not as good as AMS2, but I mean AMS2 was newer, graphically a lot better, probably like a general, well, maybe half a generation ahead of what this particular um, game is, like what was Spacey 2013, I think. Good. Uh, what are we doing here? Like 1 minute 37. That seems slow, I think. Well, we did have a little spin, didn't we, at the start of the last lap, so... I'm guessing like a 31 to 33 should be where we're aiming at. Yeah, I can definitely feel the back of it on brakes coming around a little. Kind of makes it more, and there's the understeer, you can feel quite quickly when the front breaks away there. That didn't really happen for me in AMS2. Yeah, I mean... This is excellent as well, um, to be honest, like... Feels great. Feels really good. Um, try and push it a little bit here, but it is going to be challenging because I do notice as soon as you approach the limit in this, it does start to talk back at you. see what we can do though. Just to understeer and the rear coming. Yeah, you can balance this more, like it is a bit more dynamic. A little bit more dynamic, like there's more going on. Um, yeah, I mean both cars are great though, absolutely brilliant model this. Very impressive. Yeah, you can get the rear rotating a bit if you trail break in there. So, um, yeah, brilliant. This will be a 33, maybe 34? 33, 9. All right. It's impressive. Very impressive. Just to the right of the dash, we have the Imola track map with the F122. I think that's because this Imola track is doing a run of the F122 um, skin. Let's have a replay of this. Yeah, so... Yeah, it felt really, really good, I have to say. Um, compared to AMS2, like, I did notice, like, a bit more dynamicism in the handling, like, particularly on brakes and in neutral position. And there you can see, like, that was the first lap, like, ex you know, when I turned in AMS2, I was expecting the whole car to stick, but here it, it, it clearly didn't. Um,
Let's just listen to the sound. Yeah, it does sound pretty good. The onboards are pretty cool, aren't they? Yeah, okay, so, I mean, like I say, it, it felt really dynamic, it felt really engaging, like, both the front and the rear of the car, you could feel doing different things at different times, all of it was communicated, like, you could feel the understeer when it happened, you could feel the back of it trying to come around on the brakes, you could feel the rear rotating a little bit on the brakes in certain circumstances, um, and obviously then you could also feel the, 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 the wheel spin and the slip from... Um, no, giving it too much throttle too quickly. Um, in terms of the curb interactions, I would say very similar to um, AMS2, like through the chicane. You know, just the right amount of the car being unsettled. Didn't feel unrealistic, didn't launch the car. Um, everything just felt as, as I would like it to feel, to be honest. Like, it felt natural, it felt good. I, you know, if I, if I had to pick between this and AMS2, just just based on, on you know, I, I think the, the graphically um, and stuff, I think AMS2 is just looks a bit cleaner, looks a bit more polished um, from a driving perspective. Um, it'd be difficult to separate them. I think AMS2 um, allows you to kind of maybe, maybe race more because there's a little bit less going on in terms of the car moving around the place and what that does is it allows it to kind of get into a rhythm and be comfortable and that can lead to great racing like if you don't have to think about the car too much um when you're actually racing wheel to wheel against people um you can have much better racing because you're more focused on positioning your car defending attacking and stuff uh, and a bit less on uh, you know if the car's going to snap or step out a little bit um, like it still steps, it still snaps an AMS2, but I just felt in, in this anyway, it, it, it seemed a bit more a bit more dynamic, I guess, in that sense. Um, anyway, let's go and get the um, the latest out of the lot, which is the uh, BMW N Hybrid in uh, Le Mans Ultimate. And we'll bring it to the newly uh, released Imola track as well. Um, I do expect this to be a bit more difficult, I have to be honest. But... Um, well, let's go and do it. Let's go and see. Right, guys, so here we are in the uh, BMW M hypercar in um, LMU. So let me just double check. I just want to load up a quick Fanatec profile for this. I thought I had one. I do have one saved. It just hasn't auto selected for the car. Um, no, it hasn't. So BMW LMD. Right, there we go. All right, let us. I'm back into this, uh, see what it's like compared to the, uh, computer sims, right, so. Alrighty. So there's the model. Uh, so, I mean, graphically, yeah, it looks really, really nice. Really, really nice. And, it's looking, yeah, the, well, that's something I haven't noticed before. The the, t the, the tires have the uh, the medium yellow tag on it, uh, which is cool. Never noticed that. All right, let's uh, see what the sound is like. Okay, a little bit muted. The force feedback is quite light, though we're just out of pits on all tires. Alright, let's get a lap or two under the car. And this is totally different, man. This is...
this is um I would go as far as to say this is an outlier like I'm, I've only done a couple of corners but it feels nothing like the other two nothing like the other two at all on these uh, like I do know that cold tires is a big thing in LMU but this feels like it's like there's like no downforce on the car almost the tires are just it's like they've nothing to give but that's um is what it is like you know let's get a couple of laps and get the tires heated up maybe yeah you have to be patient here man this is a uh, this is a different um, petal of fish altogether. It's just there is not that much grip on the tire at the moment, so. Let's check the tire temperatures, in fact. Yeah, it's just clumsy at low speed as well, like the downforce drops off the car and because the tyres are still a bit cold, um, it's just not really giving a lot of grip like. Now again, in all of these tests, I've just got a basic setup on the car, like I haven't touched anything, just whatever the game gives me. But from a balanced perspective, like they all feel quite similar. Um, so yeah, I think it's... Um, over the curbs like the behaviour seems normal enough. Curbs elsewhere on the track, and I mean not just in the chicane but elsewhere on the track in LMU seem to have a bit more of an unsettling kind of effect um, and it's more pronounced which is uh, which is nice I think feels realistic at least. Oh, in the wrong gear going in there. In the wrong gear, I thought it was a uh, gear below. Yeah, you have to think when you're driving this, it's um, not as pick up and play as the other two. Yeah, it's not as pick up and play at all. I mean, this is definitely if more to think about, like in terms of the car balance on the corner, mid corner, on the brakes, coming out of the corner, everywhere. It's just... It's more dynamic and extremely punishing. Like, I knew this was going to be more difficult, but having just come out the other two into this, um, I realised just how tough this actually is. Our temperature should be there or there about now, so we'll get maybe a lap or two and kind of see what see what's about. there on the entry. Yeah, 
yeah, this is definitely, um, it's definitely harder, that's for sure. And it's not harder in the eye racing harder where the, the tire just has no grip at the back and you spin. It's harder as in, the tire model is, feels like forgiving enough the way it should be. But it's all of the other stuff going on when it gets to that point. Like how did they get there? Was it the front that you overdrove on the way in? Was it the back began to step away? Did the car heave too much? Did it yaw too much? All of that is going on when you're driving this thing. Yeah, this is good, man. This is a. Uh Big lock up there. I just stamped on the brake. Car is okay though, I think. This is very good. Very good. We'll do one more lap. 32 9. I need to probably set the car up a little bit and spend a bit more time practice, but just for some initial runs, just to see how all of these sims compare. And um, yeah, this is impressive. Yeah. I think we've lost it. But anyway, we leave. Yeah, if we leave it there, in fact. Yeah, I've, I've done enough to kind of understand I guess the the differences um between all of these. So um I'm driving LMU. Um I mean I think you could see um there's certainly a lot more going on in the car, right? The the balance is just way more dynamic. Um like when the, in IMS two on a set of course so like you could feel um, kind of the front was very strong, more so in AMS2, like the front of that was very, very strong. Um, but it, it felt nice, like you could, you could you could steer from like what felt like the like the, the back two thirds of the car was where you could, you know, you made the turn. Um, in Assetto Corsa, it became more of a, almost like 50-50, right? So the front had a bit of uh, give, like it would let go. Um, you could still have to control the back. But in LMU, um, it, like, like forget that thought. It was like, you know, feels like you're actually driving a car and each corner of the car has its own, um, each corner of the car has its own limit. And you're managing that limit all of the time. Uh, it felt like a, from a realism, realism point of view, I think it felt the most realistic out of all of them. Um, the the feedback when the downforce ramped up was a bit lighter, but I, you know that that could be just the wheel settings for this particular game. Um, overall, I mean the the overall force feedback like was nice and detailed in all of them. Um, but like I said, the you know I have to give it to LMU in terms of like when you consider the amount of extra dynamic stuff going on. Um, and the fact that they were able to communicate that to the force feedback, that was quite impressive. Um, let's have a look at some of the onboards. Um, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, nice uh, shiny reflections off the paintwork of the car there, which is uh, really nice. It's 
great, isn't it? Really, really nice. Yeah, I do. I do think, like, I do think LMU is. Um, you know, I do think it's where it's at, like in this uh, next generation of racing simulators, if you get me. Like, I mean, I know the early development of the game for the last couple of months, and I know it's still in the early development, technically. Um, and, you know, they've released some DLC, which has kind of divided the community a bit. Like, you know, should they release DLC when the game is not finished? But, I mean, ultimately, um, anyone familiar with the position of the sport games are in, like, understand, well, you know, you need cash flow coming in to pay developers. And, um, you know, when people say, well, go, well, motorsport games, like, they made their bed, let them lie in it, but you have to remember that the, um, the management has been uh, replaced, and um, I feel that the team in charge now are, are trying to make the right decisions, you know, like, they've got rid of some of the licenses like the IndyCar and BTCC and stuff and they've began to you know to clean slate like focus on one title make it excellent and um you know I, I think they're they're doing that to be fair um still a bit to go like they're still getting there they're still working away but um I do I do think that DLC and maybe uh you know like whatever way they can uh, gain revenue uh, to, to develop the games, you know, it, it, it's necessary, it's a necessary evil, you know, um, like I, I racing do it, um, I'm not suggesting they take a similar approach to iRacing because, it, 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 like, I subscribe to iRacing, but to be honest with you, I only do it because there's no other proper online ranking system, um, if LMU does the ranking system correctly and the quality is good, which so far it is, and if they sort out the um, the whole ABS hack thing or whatever, um, I would come across to LMU um, and, and you know sacrifice my racing. I think you know if it meant that the studio uh, survived, uh, they were able to develop the game and expand the game over time. Um, but I do think and I hope that there will be a different approach to Nor Factor, and I think it will. I think it will because like if you think of Or Factor, even you know they licensed the IndyCar into a game that. You know, wasn't too popular in the grand scheme of things. Then they start adding in the BTCC stuff uh, into the same game, and it was all kind of just add in DLC into a game that was already, the, let's say, unpopular-ish by large standards, right? Um, when I say that, like I'm comparing it to Assetto courses and stuff like that, um, like it was never as big as Assetto, probably not as big as the Formula One game either, you know. So plowing in like heavy licensing fees and development time when you've got a sim that's so scattered in what it does and um, it's just not a good business decision in my opinion i think what they've done this time around though where this is different is they've gone okay it's a new game it's lmu and what we're going to do is endurance uh, and, and, and WEC and aco license stuff from the looks of things so it's very focused and they've focused very well um, and this worked for ACC, don't forget, you know, uh, the superbly successful uh, title. Um, so if they manage to do the same, and if, I think if you get enough people kind of bought into the game and willing to give it a shot, um, I think it has every chance. But if, you know, if it, if it doesn't, um, if it doesn't get any growth and people don't buy into it and they don't buy into the DLCs and stuff, then, you know, you have to kind of ask, well, okay, what's the cash position like um, of the company? Um, you know, it, it's... You know, developers cost money, guys. That's the, you know, that's the reality, I guess. Um, if you're selling as many titles as the F1 game or Assetto Corsa with the DLCs and it's successful, then you don't need to, you know, get money in as quick because they're selling such a high volume. But... I think with the current player base of this game is still quite low at the moment. Um, so, what I will say, right, from a, a game perspective, I think they've narrowed the vision down properly. Um, it feels really, really good. Um, and you think, like, what Automobilista have done as well over the period, like, with such a small studio. I mean, if uh, the LMU guys can do the same thing, you just buy, you know, and... <coughs> 
think you have a set of Corsa 2 around the corner, or a set of Corsa Evo, whatever it's called now. Um, yeah, it's a good future for some racing, but um, yeah, but anyway, I will say, like, in terms of the BMW hybrid kind of shootout, um, LMU, yeah, it, it's noticeably just that step ahead. Um, I mean, the other, the other ones are great. The other ones are great. Like, I had brilliant enjoyment driving it. This was harder to drive. Um, like, if you were to ask me which, which do I enjoy more, right? Um, I'd probably say AMS2. Maybe AC. I mean, wh what I mean by that is it just felt more comfortable, you know. I could drive. I didn't have to think too much. It was more fun. Um, this was certainly more challenging. Um, yeah, I'm sure if I'd done maybe 15 or 20 laps in this, I'd... I'd become accustomed to the twitchiness and be like, oh, well, okay, I'm used to this now, so this is okay. But when you've come from the other two games into this, um, it, it's certainly more uh, it's certainly more of a challenge. Um, and I remember even coming from ACC back in the day into this um, at the start and was like, wow, you know, just an absolute wake-up call. But, um, but yeah, guys, anyway, thanks for watching. Um, if you haven't and you're on the fence about LMU, I mean... It, it drives brilliantly, right? I I will never take that away from from the, the guys, right? It, it drives probably the best out of all the sims that is out there. And I, I have them all, you know, I, I, I play them all. Um, this, this, from a driving perspective, um, takes it, but it's not without its other um, problems, like in terms of, uh, you know, the, the online player base is still probably not where it needs to be, particularly in the goals ranked servers. But that is slowly improving. But, um... No, I guess it takes a community to build a community. So, until more players come on board, it's not going to fix itself, you know? Um, so, kind of, community spirit, I guess, is needed uh, for any game to be successful, not just this one. But, uh, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, leave it there, and, uh, yeah. See you on track, and until the next one.